It's your girl Nita, your favorite diva, and I am back. I am back to talk succession. And if you are like me, you've been anxiously awaiting the succession series finale, and boy, did it deliver. The hour and a half long episode packed in all of the family drama, the corporate backstabbing, and the unexpected twist that we've come to expect from this show. Overall, the succession finale was a fitting conclusion to a season and series that kept us on the edge of our seats and left us wanting more. All throughout seeing this series finale, all throughout the, the season as a whole, I just kept playing in my head, self-destruction, you're headed for self-destruction. It was very fitting that it ended in this manner. They were fighting in that boardroom in private, but not really because the room is made totally in glass and it is not soundproof. Child, that whole sequence was insane. It was so hard to watch them implode in such a horrible way like that. Them being at their mother's house is an interesting choice that they made for the beginning, um, the beginning half of this episode. The calm before the storm, if you will. Them having such a great bonding time in the kitchen, just being kids. That potion that they made for Kendall when they crowned him king, they say he could have it. The whole humiliation process. The cheese, licking the cheese, you know Roman, only as Roman can do. Licking that cheese, it was hilarious. I really, really enjoyed that. And God, it felt like I knew where this was going. But I still was playing self-destruction in my head because of all the moves that the kids had been making. Shiv betraying the family for Tom. I am not really a fan of that. To me, Shiv is the most like her father, Logan. But she's a woman and she's always going to get the short end of the stick. That's just how it works. On the surface, it felt like it could have been the best choice for her because her brothers had cut her out after the passing of their father, Logan. She's always going to be behind the eight ball being a woman. I feel like she might have felt like she had a better chance with Tom because of her and the baby and that little stick that she can dangle. Um, Tom is more malleable. She's He's more bendable. She could have played the long game and pulled Tom over to their side. Having him on the other side gives her an in on both sides. But now she's burnt her brother's. And now she's destined for an unhappy life with a man she can't even stand and a child she doesn't even want. So in the end, I feel like she kind of herself, not even knowing. Kendall was being really cocky and egotistical throughout once he was crowned king. Um, I feel like that in itself was her petty way. She just knew that she could not stomach her brother Kendall in that place of power. Pretty much a move like you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face. I feel like that's what she ended up doing. Um, she knows that no matter what, Kendall would do anything um, to be on top. And I don't think that he would be holding their hands and lifting them up. He would be stabbing them in the back to get the top dog position. You no, know, her having a background in the political realm, it was very much of her picking the lesser of two evils. And it felt like it was very true to her character that we've seen over the seasons. Now, Greg. Greg, I thought he was gonna be the dark horse in this, that he was gonna come and steal it all for himself. I thought that they were gonna pay off all of the information and the intel that he had gathered over the seasons. He was just gonna steal it right from underneath them. Because in that shocking twist that we found this letter in this safe after Logan passed away, 
where Logan kind of underlined and kind of crossed out Kendall's name, but then he went back and scribbled Greg's name with a question mark. So I was like, okay, I think Logan saw the potential in Greg, but nope, they didn't pay that off. We did see Greg getting his lick back in the bathroom with Tom, who was beating him down the whole time. So we got the Greg and the Gregging and the Tom of it all. Um, he wanted to be down with the quad because essentially the Roy's were the ones that had the most power and he was trying to get with the quad. Ultimately, he did not rise up to the Machiavellian I thought he would end up being. So there's that with Greg. Roman, Roman, poor Roman. It all just became too much for him. He was good at it at times, especially if he hadn't ruined it with Jerry. And, you know, that whole thing with him ruining it with Jerry, it felt like it was very underhanded for Logan to tell him to make that move. In essence, I felt like um, Logan killed that, that whole dynamic. He killed that. And um, I, I, I believe... That when Jerry said, I could have carried you to the top, I definitely believe that. Jerry was one of my favorite characters, but at the end of the day, he just wasn't in it. In it. He wasn't built for it. He was way too damaged. Um, the tra He was very much trauma bonded with his father. Um, I believe his father physically abused him. That's when we get this scene um, in the thing where he was breaking down. And you remember he had the stitches and how Kendall held him and, and, and put that pain in him. It was almost like a um, some kind of something that Kendall knew that Roman needed. So he kind of inflicted that pain on him to try to, you know, to snap him out of it and stuff like that. Child, it's just a mess. This whole family is a mess. How they process their, their trauma, their pain, um, their emotions. It is very, very much twisted. Um, he loved his father the most. Um, and he tried after his um, death, but he just really spiraled. I feel like Roman has the most potential to rebound to be a better person because at least he has some touch to his emotions. I think he can do it. He just needs a little therapy. Well, a lot of therapy. And um, him just sitting at the bar with a small smirk on his face felt befitting as well for his end in this series. Oh, Kendall, Kendall, Kendall. Oh, man. Kendall. I really can see him offing himself. Self-deletion. I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's something I'm glad that they didn't or they wouldn't show it or they didn't show it and they really left it ambiguous. But you really got the sense of the the nothingness, that the emptiness that was left for him. Um, he felt so lost, so disappointed, so embarrassed, so pathetic. Sometimes powerful men like that, there's nothing left for them um it feels like he's lost his purpose for living essentially um because when you have a big narcissistic presence in, in 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 your life and then that person is gone and everything you've done all of that triangulation that he was doing the trying to pit the kids against each other and that was their sense of being you know what i'm saying like it was he was trying to prove himself the whole time, get his father's validation and stuff like that. I think he's essentially lost his purpose for living. Um, Rava has taken the kids, um, his siblings, they have imploded on themselves. Um, sure, he could go on, but I think the emptiness and the embarrassment and the feeling, um, this lifelong journey of trying and ultimately failing um, the results could be devastating and disastrous. And, you know, I really pray for Kendall's character. Um, yeah, but it's not looking too good for him. Tom, let's clap it up for Tom, y'all. Let's clap it up for Tom. He won. He won. In this game, he won, even if it's short-lived, because the future is never certain in this cutthroat world. 
a lot of times you keep on seeing how things shift in a matter of moments where you think you have the upper hand and you're on a fast decline. Right now, he's on top. However, Shiv never understood that humiliating Tom behind his back to Lucas, saying that he would be sucking the biggest in the room, ended up being the actual trait that secured the deal with Lucas Matson, cutting herself out of the deal. There were some definite signs there um, that Lucas was going to betray her. That drawing that they showed him looking at, where um, it was like a puppeteer and had Shiv on the top with the puppet master strings, that sealed her fate. Um, he allowed her to feed him some information that was needed and discarded her promptly um, when he had enough ammunition to fire the gun in another direction. So, in essence, Tom was the safe choice. She was much more dangerous in a way. Um, but she knew she was going to get screwed if Kendall got in, in place as well. So Tom really bided his time and ended up with the win in the end. So... Series as a whole, um, episode three of season four will still always be my favorite. It's one of those ones that knocked me off my rocker. I mean, I cannot believe like how it had me in a chokehold. Like I kept watching and rewatching and rewatching. Uh, hang in there. Yeah. Um, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. No, we love you, Dad. Okay, we love you. I love you, Dad. I do, I love you. Okay. Uh, and it's okay. It, because it was so masterfully done, I was just like, my mind was totally blown. In the third um, episode of season four, Logan Roy dies while on a plane en route to Sweden and his children are barely able to get on the phone in time to say goodbye to their beloved well that might be a strong word but respected patriarch it was a very hard jolt in the world of succession because you know Logan Roy was larger than life he the the the, the show centered around him it was a very hard jolt in the world of succession that left me with my mouth open, my heart crushed, and tears in my eyes. Logan Roy, a world of a father. He was the grandiose narcissist of television TV. He was there trying to raise a Michael Colleone and ended up with a bunch of Fredos. <laughs> His death was pivotal to making this season one of its best. I really miss the old bastard once he was gone. But like all narcissists, they never changed all the way to their dying day. Even though Logan was trying to tell um, Roman he was the one, the way he backstabbed him with Jerry, with that action telling him to fire her, that's Logan. That's the narcissist all the way to the end, okay? He never changed. What you see is what you get. You have to be a killer. You're not a killer. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that is what I'll say about Logan Roy. Oh, some of the other highlights are the funeral scene with his estranged brother, Ewan, um, giving a hard spill of a eulogy towards his brother. And I enjoyed it for one. Um, you know, a lot of times, like I say, um, a lot of times you like to understand why people are the way they are. And I think, you know, Ewan provided some context um, to some of the things that, that Logan held on to and what he went through when he was growing up. So I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm glad they wrote that in there. Um, the old guard, Jerry, Carolina, Carl, Frank, Hugo, 
Carlton, um, they all had their moments in the sun. It is truly, truly a huge ensemble cast with stellar performances topped off with a truly somber ending. Um, there's no heavy ending in this thing. I didn't think, I'm trying to figure out what did, what was y'all watching because you know that there are no happy endings in succession. That was never this show. And I also want to give uh, kudos to Jesse Armstrong, the showrunner, creator, and writer of Succession, of course, with a whole team of writers and directors, um, has done impeccable, impeccable work um, in crafting one of HBO um, best of the best. Um, bravo in your future endeavors. And so, yeah, y'all, that is my review um, commentary on Succession. But when I couldn't get up there and do the long live the king, I said, let me just go ahead and just kind of give you my overall thoughts um, when it came down to um, the series as a whole. Um, bravo. Um, it's one of those um, very dialogue heavy, um, very um, Adam McKay-ish type of shows. Sometimes that, um, that can you know, wear people a little thin because it's too much to, you know, it's too complicated. I know that's why I didn't really jump into doing the reviews because it was just always too dialogue heavy. I said, I cannot take that's an undertaking that I just cannot do. So I just went on ahead and went this way, um, to just, you know, give you my overall thoughts on succession. I hope if you haven't watched succession, I hope that this makes you want to go back and revisit it. I Thank you so much for watching my review. If you like it, please hit that like and subscribe button for more TV and movie content. And um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. And y'all let me know in the comments down below, what did you think of Succession? Um, yeah, I definitely want to know. And so, as always, I'm Nita, your favorite diva. Don't forget to like, comment, and share your thoughts on the series as a whole. Um, the winner, the loser. Um, you know, tell me your thoughts. I really, really want to know. And make sure you leave it down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.